I'm going to be doing a series of short videos just to um, help you from a training perspective understand the effects of anxiety, um, particularly at this time. So I'm going to split the videos into short sections so that um, maybe you can click on whichever ones you think might be most appropriate to you. So I hope you find them useful. Cheers. As a bit of an intro, it's useful to remember that there's, there's different parts to our brain. So when we're relaxed and um, just doing our day-to-day -day jobs um, in a relaxed state, we're using what's called the intellectual part of our brain. Um, this is the part of the brain that we don't share with the animal kingdom. Um, it keeps us um, relaxed and calm. Um, and as, as I say, when we live our lives with that part of our thinking, we don't suffer from stress and anxiety. But unfortunately, there is another part of our brain, um, the original primitive part or emotional brain, as some people call it. And the center and influential part of this is called our amygdala. You've probably heard it um, described as your fight or flight response. Now, if you think about it, if your anxiety goes up for whatever reason, naturally, you will stop using your intellectual brain and you are forced to use your primitive emotional thinking. Um, and because it's a fight or flight response, you may find that um, you'll suffer from anxiety, uh, depression, maybe even anger. So it can help us understand those three things in particular. Um, that's, I suppose, the intro to the different parts of our brain and what happens to our, our thinking when we get anxious. So at the moment, if you're feeling anxious about anything, then what's going on in your body is you're using your primitive emotional thinking and that will send certain chemicals through your mind and body, things like adrenaline, cortisol. It can help us understand why we may suffer from uh, panic feelings, um, a heart's racing, um, some people get an upset stomach or just general feelings of overwhelm and obsessive thinking. Because it's the primitive emotional part of our thinking, well, you know, when the cave person looked out of the cave and saw snow or ice or danger, um, they would have retreated and just pulled the rug back over themselves until the situation had changed. We can associate that with the modern day feelings of feeling depressed and wanting to withdraw. Again, um, our primitive ancestors never would have been far away from that panic button, the feeling of panic and be looking out for danger all of the time. They definitely would have had problems with getting to sleep and staying asleep. Our anxiety comes from the way that we think. It isn't the events that are going on that's causing our anxiety. It's our thinking when we enter our primitive emotional brain. Every time we have a negative thought or a worry, it's stored in a part of our brain called the hippocampus, or as I like to call it, the stress bucket. Every negative thought gets stored in the stress bucket so that if there's lots of negative thoughts, you find that your bucket becomes full and you suffer the effects of stress, anxiety or anger. I want to show you what you can do about it, how you can improve your thinking, how you can stay relaxed, how you can improve your sleep and importantly, what we can do to empty our bucket.